They're still sitting peacefully with these with this elephant. The others I can still hear faintly behind us uh, some branches breaking, but they moved in a different direction. Um, I, I don't know when last I saw a brown hooded kingfisher, so that's a nice sighting for Taylor this morning. And we do get the, those kingfishers are here throughout the year, and they feed on the insects. <clears throat> so, for one to see one and then find one with an insect is great, especially for this time of year. But uh, I don't know when last I saw a brown hooded kingfisher. That elephant just stripped off all those leaves. You see how he pulled his mouth to the side and just pulled the leaves off that branch? Snazzy, no, those trunks, uh, oh, I'm trying to think, no, no, not that I know of, they don't have bones in it, it's basically just made up of thousands of muscles, uh, little muscles and nerves, um, so that's what the trunk has basically got, now I'm trying to think, if right at the base, if there's a bit of a bone there, I don't think so, Snazzy, um, no, as far as I know, it's just muscle and tissue, that the trunk is made of and very powerful, very strong muscle. Ali, you asked if these African elephants would recognize the Asian elephants as different species. Um, well, there's obviously the language barrier that would be a problem. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm being silly. Um, Ali, I, I don't know. Um, I, yes, I, I would assume so, but these, these animals would never meet. So, um, but I am probably sure that they would recognize a different species I suppose who knows who knows <laughs> this really is wonderful it, it, it's it's um you know I always talk about patience and and um, and just enjoying being out in the bush doesn't matter what you see but sitting with an elephant like this so relaxed feeding listening to the sounds of the bush watching the mist still settling in the valley um, in front of us it's just it, it really is wonderful Not bad for a Tuesday morning at the office. Definitely beats traffic. Hey, Craig. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again. I have a bike. I don't have yeah, I was going to say, Craig. Craig has got a motorbike. Um, he's the hell's angel of the of the um, uh, Wild Earth crew. <laughs> Craig. Craig doesn't sit in traffic, he has a motorbike. <laughs>
what do you do with the Batmobile then during the week? <laughs> Get Alfred to wash it. <laughs> Yeah, some hornbills calling out too. Have any of our viewers had interesting elephant sightings? Those of you that have possibly been on safari before, I know quite a few of you have. Um, I'm curious, have, have any of you had interesting sight, elephant sightings or, um, or slightly nerve-wracking elephant sightings that have left you a little bit hesitant on the elephant? I'm always very curious. I, I enjoy hearing stories like that. So um, please send us your comments or answers, hashtag Safari Live, if, you, if you've had an interesting elephant sighting. Elizabeth, I'm I'm not sure. Um, you asked if the elephants lose condition in the winter. <clears throat> I I would assume a little bit. I would assume so. Um, but it it's not very clear, Elizabeth. Um, however, when there is a drought, you, you will see you will see um, elephants lose condition when there's no food around. You will see um, the hip, hips hips being um or protrude a lot more um you will see the the the, the spine and that uh all of that start becoming very very visible so they do lose condition uh when when there's a drought but in the winter generally maybe a little bit if you would if you notice i i don't think so i don't think we'd notice it really There's a barred owlet calling at the moment too in the distance. Just going to try roll forward. Joshua, um, this elephant, I'm not sure how old it is exactly. Um, I would guess this Ellie's probably, probably around 20, somewhere around there. Oh, listen. He's communicating now. Hold on. I just want to try to roll forward a little bit. Um. Now, I think he's, I think he's around about 20. Just want to creep closer. Good morning. Why are you shaking? You see how he's lifted, lifted his ears. I'm gonna keep quiet now. He's getting a bit closer. Look at that. Is he smelling me? But still, no signs of aggression. How oh, cool is that? See, just having a little sniff. He opened his ears just to make himself look a little bit bigger, saying. Don't come any closer, but these young bulls, often they get curious or they're trying to establish that they're a bit dominant or they test us almost. But how incredible. Wow, this elephant. <clears throat> this elephant is about three or four meters from him. The 
this elephant. <laughs> he flicked, he, as he bent that branch, it flicked back and a, a twig flew into my head. <laughs> oh dear. Now, M Moira, you were saying, was it Moira, Alice? Did I hear that name correctly? Um, <laughs> um, more ups, sorry, I can't hear that, uh, that name correctly, but you said that um, you were charged by a young... You were saying that you were charged by an, a young elephant bull at Motswari. Now, Motswari is in the Timavati. Now, I know that area very well too. Lovely area, a lot of elephant around there. Um, so I'm sure that uh, would have been a, an interesting and this elephant's communicating again I think he's communicating with those two other bulls that were they, they moved off to the left so I think he's communicating with them now um, so sometimes these young um, these young bulls can get a bit boisterous and take chances and try to charge try and intimidate I do think it all depends on how you handle the situation um, because uh, sometimes if they if they know that they can chase you or that they are able to chase you they will do it a lot more <coughs> but sometimes you just I mean you've got to be careful it, it does happen from time to time but the young bulls, oh, they take chances really. They um, they're trying to s establish dominance. There. There's a little head shake from that elephant. I don't know what he's shaking his head at. But, uh, but that was really wonderful. He must have been about three or four meters from me, standing just open his ears, lifted his trunk to smell us, and then moved on again. Completely comfortable, not aggressive at all. He's still moving around feeding. I always say my golden rule is a feeding elephant is a happy elephant. So while they're feeding, and you generally know that they're not that phased by you. But it's not uh, it's not pleasant to be charged by an elephant. Um, I once, and I'm trying to think now, but I... I mean, I've had mock charges by big Ellie bulls, or I've I've had like a little uh, one or two occasions where I thought, look, we should rather just leave these elephant and move move away. But um, w once I was actually just with with my family, and we were in the Timbavati, and there was a big big bull elephant that um, that we spotted, but we spotted him from. Oh, we must have been at least 50 or 60 meters away from him. He was quite fine. He was walking with, with serious intent. He wasn't feeding. He just walked and walked and walked. And and he saw us. And he just turned and charged. No warning. Um, it was very, very unusual. And all I can think is perhaps somebody had chased him. Somebody had aggravated him. And that caused him to then react to the next vehicle that he saw that is also something that you have to be careful of is if another vehicle is upset elephant they they take a while to calm down and if another vehicle appears they'll probably charge that one too because it's a, basically it reminds them of what what the uh, the previous vehicle just did but um, anyway this elephant charged us out of nowhere just turned and came but he must have charged us I'm not joking when I say at least a kilometre, um, a kilometre, maybe a bit more, so almost a mile, that this elephant charged us and kept on. We, we drove away a number of times where we lost view of him completely, and he just kept coming through the bush, kept coming at us. And eventually we thought, we better not stick around, and we drove out of that area completely. But a very, very strange behaviour not sure what aggravated him and it's probably the only time i've ever had that i've only uh, yeah it's, it's only happened to me once that an elephant has been that aggressive that was it was coming for the vehicle i could see it but 
but um, and we were far away from it so I'm not sure why <laughs> so as I was saying it's just you do have to be careful of the elephant and you do have to be cautious and respectful of them but um, but they, um, yeah, I think they do generally give you a lot of warning in that. So, now mobile pad, <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> you were asking, um, you were asking about um, that that sighting that, well, not quite a sighting, the incident rather, the the, the infamous incident <laughs> that um, it it got it got me banned actually by james so I'll, I'll tell you that so so when we were training you asked about the broomstick incident you asked about the broomstick incident and